that like mm -hmm. destroyed me. Instead of focusing on what you don't like, okay. leaning on what you do like. Awesome. <laughs>
we of course gave a refund, full refund. Uh, but then also I offered to do a coaching session with them for 25 minutes. Yeah. So I'm like in wall to wall coaching session with the people, <laughs> but I love it. I mean, it's not the most effective use of my time, but I love meeting people from Believe Nation from across the country, right? like across America, people were buying tickets for this. Mm -hmm. um, and so even this, this conversation right now is a result of Jimmy buying a ticket, getting refunded because yeah. I canceled. And now we're doing this coaching session. And so in my head, it's like, I can make it up to everybody. Like even, even if this wasn't enough, even if Jimmy is still pissed off and like he, <laughs> he, he moved his wedding to come to this event and like, this is not enough, you know, uh, I, in my head, it's like, I can still make it up to him. I, I just believe everybody in my audience, they're good people, ultimately they're rational people, and if they understand the situation, I can still do more to, to make it up to you. Um, so that became then easy. It's a ton of work. It's a crap yeah, ton of yeah, work yeah. that everybody, you know, my agent and the people around are like, what are you doing? That's just such a way. You need to be promoting your book right now, not doing these free calls with some startup entrepreneur out of Florida. Um, but just for my own like soul, yeah. Um, the hardest thing was actually the two guys on my team who we brought with on the tour. So it was me, Nina, Jeremy, and uh, Ray Ray. And Nina, I knew would be okay. I mean, we've been through enough <laughs> hardships, breaking my neck, all that. Like we've gone through enough <laughs> uh, struggles, you know, together that I knew we'd be fine. We'd figure it out. But the other two guys, I was I was concerned about. Um, mostly because they put their life on hold for two just months for the, mm, just for this, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, Ray Ray was a mm. teacher. He's studying to be a teacher. And so he put a hold on his college, which which like they very rarely let you do to come and, and do this. And he's excited to go to all the like sign language cafes and stuff in different cities and meet all these people that we lined up. And like now none of that's happening. I'm like, surprise, tonight you go back home to where you were. Uh, and so oh, that like mm -hmm. destroyed me because I felt like I don't know how to make it up to these guys. Jimmy, I can make it up to. Everybody else who bought a ticket, I can make it up to. Nina will be okay. I'll be fine. But these two guys, that was the only thing that was on my mind. So it's like a quick rapid fire checklist. Security guard hates his life. Okay. Everybody who bought a ticket. Okay. I got yeah, okay. yeah. it. These two guys, I don't know what we're going to do. So we start driving back and like, I, I need to take you guys out to dinner. I mean, we hadn't eaten. We, we sat at the border for four hours or something, just waiting. Um, so it's now past dinner time. Is that let's go at least get a meal together. Um, and I just felt like anything that I, I mean, I could have bought them some package or something. I just felt like it's so trivial to say, hey, sorry, you couldn't come for 90 days, but here's some movie passes or something. Just felt like it wasn't enough. So I said, Let, let's grab a nice dinner along the way home. And we're driving from Buffalo to my hometown of Toronto. And it's just highways. So the, the only thing on the highway is like McDonald's and all these like, oh my God, I can't, we can't go to McDonald's. Like you gotta have something. And then, and then we find a keg and, and a keg. I don't know. I don't think it's in the States. A keg That's is something a, I hadn't heard that one. It's a steakhouse, not super fancy, but not low end. I mean, it's a steakhouse. So you're looking at like, like 45 bucks, 50 bucks. Okay. So okay. it's like, decent yeah better yeah, than yeah. mcdonald's but not like 500 bucks a plate or something um so i said we're gonna go to the keg and as we walk in i said guys like get anything you want <laughs> like even if you just want to nibble on it and then we give it to a homeless person something like uh, just get whatever you want and i and i let them know that um i felt so guilty that uh that this happened and that i let them down and that this was so disappointing not for me but for them um and so make me feel a little bit better by ordering whatever you want and and they both said listen this wasn't like we're just we, we were happy to be invited we're actually uh surprised at how you handled it at the border and and no hard feelings at all like thank you for the love and inviting us along and so once we got through that night it's like okay i still feel bad but but, but i feel better because so of all the things i think it's maybe reverse for what most people might do like i cared more about the two people that i brought along with me and the impact on their life than all the other, other people the border security guard and wishing him ill harm or all the people who came out on the tour um because i just felt like i was going to disappoint them you know I, I will say um a very good leader 
has the ability to make a major impact. And and obviously in that particular moment, I mean, not that you need my kudos or anything, but <laughs> obviously in that moment, I mean, you really stepped above dramatically to pass most leaders in that situation, at least I believe so. And speaking of that and thinking about your audience, so you were, I did it, or you did a, um, a live call on Instagram. And, and one of the statements I remember bringing up to you um, was about how I felt that I had outgrown my one word. Mm -hmm. And your response to me was just like, hey, that almost never happens, you know, and if you did, you probably just chose that one word out of a, a knee-jerk reaction. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of fast forward just a little bit on that. I had to kind of rediscover what the hell was, pro like literally what was processing in my mind. Yep. And so it wasn't that I had outgrown my one word. Mm -hmm. um, because for me, my one word is freedom. I believe we all have the right to be free in every area of our lives. And I had not outgrown, but I had mastered a very small segment of what mm -hmm. I thought freedom was. Mm -hmm. And so since I'd mastered that, all of a sudden, all of these other things around me just seemed like it seemed like I was just rolling along doing absolutely nothing and not making an impact, not making like not doing a damn thing. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, and it made me feel as if I had outgrown that one word. Mm -hmm. And so when I went back, trying to figure out what the hell I need to do next, um, I've started to do, I have two additional mentors now. Um, one is with me on the corporate side of things to try to figure out what I want to do next. And then the other mentor, he actually has his own national talk show, which I'm totally excited about. I've been behind the scenes with him. I've seen how things are edited and put together. Um, and he is, he has two national talk shows that are on television, several podcasts, and then I think he has four radio shows that are here in Memphis and then in Nashville. Mm -hmm. and so he's a really busy guy. So for me to get a chance to kind of break open his brain, I kind of got a chance to see a whole lot. Of course, you know, my goal is to be a talk show host, right? Yeah. 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 So looking at it from his perspective, I'm, I don't know how I feel about working for a network. Okay. Um, I don't know how I feel about the editing and basically doing what I'm doing now on my own, if that makes any sense. Like I, I'm recording, I'm booking the guests, I'm having to do the editing. At the end of the day, I really like the conversations. I like mm -hmm. to get into your brain. I like to, to provoke thought-provoking uh, thought, thought conversations or mm -hmm. ideas. That's what I love to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not stuck, I'm not at a loss, but I feel like there's so many other things that I can try just to at least see if I like them. And so one thing I would definitely like to do while I have you is like, I guess get a couple of uh, ideas or a spitball a little, a little bit with you as to what are some other things that I could potentially be doing. I love it. And listen, anybody who's been around Jimmy starts to feel the energy immediately. Like. <laughs> Uh, even when Jimmy is sleeping, <laughs> really, <laughs> even when really? he's sleeping, he's putting off a vibe. I know it. I know it. It's happening. We got a we got a bottle of that stuff. Jimmy, Jimmy breath in a, in a bottle or something and sell it. It's, it's I swear, if I could, if I could, if I could, Evan, I would. Listen, I you would. could. You get a bottle, you breathe into it, bottle it, and then you sell it. <laughs> That's I a business. Wish I, could. I wish I could. That's not I, one of my better ideas for you, though. But. I was gonna say, I just yeah. No. <laughs> but so here's the thing. Um, Instead of focusing on what you don't like, okay. lean in on what you do like. And so there's lots of different models that can work, uh, especially as just the, the opportunities open up with where, in, where the internet is going and the ability to have shows that aren't part of traditional you know, TV and, and cable. Um, the biggest thing you need to do is focus on having more conversations. So how many conversations are you actually doing on a weekly basis? Oh, ooh. Very few, very, very few. Um, recorded conversations and yeah. guests, yeah. I'm only doing one per month. Yeah, this, this is yeah. it. This is where I'm, no, I'm only so doing one per month. You're spending 29 out of 30 days a month doing the stuff that yeah. you're not extremely gifted at. And you've got like this insane talent at one thing. You're like, I'm Michael Jordan, but I'm only going to play basketball once a month. Right? Like, okay. you need to be having conversations every day, at least one a day, if not multiple a day. So, oh, okay. 
recording and interviews are only once per month. Um, because of where I work and my still my nine to five job, I, I do have quite a bit of conversations where I am helping, but most of the like probably ninety eight percent of those cannot be recorded because they're bringing up details, they're bringing up facts. I'm talking about recording. It's like and your like, thing, not you being a sidekick to learn from other people's things. Okay. It's great. Like maybe being on a talk show, you you learn how people are asking questions and you, you're learning. Awesome. As soon as you stop learning, then you should move on and get something else. But mm -hmm. you need to be doing your thing every day. A conversation, you just have to show up for. Like a conversation is as long as it takes to have the conversation. You can have a 10-minute conversation, record it, and turn it into a video. And I would do both people who you want to learn from, who inspire you for whatever reason, and then also um, people who you can help. Live coaching. Helping people actually step up and lead, like what's on your shirt. <laughs> yeah, listen, people have a hard time stepping up and leading. People Agreed. have a hard time finding what, what freedom. Who doesn't want freedom? But who actually has it? Go help the border security guard that I was talking to. <laughs> he, need, he needs your freedom, <laughs> right? I really, am. really. Yeah, so okay. that's got to be a daily thing and download everything. Even if it's just the easy starting point is Instagram Live. So what do you mean download everything? So if you do a video on Instagram Live, you have an interview with somebody, you mm -hmm. then download it because it goes away. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Right? Oh. And then... Yeah. And then zero editing. I don't care that it's a vertical video. Cut that down. Yeah. yeah Post yeah. it. Because because you're not going to win off of editing. You're going to win off of amazing conversations. So at least one a day where you're either booking people or you're talking to your audience. Just before this, I was I was on my Instagram live. I had a woman come in who who's had an idea for 10 years and hasn't started and just needed an extra little kick in the face to go off and do it. And like she was ready, right? So I gave it to her and she's off and running, but now we're going to download that video and upload it to the channel so that other people can learn from it as well. That's what I want to see you do more. And you, it doesn't mean you don't do the fancy stuff as well in the studio and the lit and the, you're like, you look great right now. It looks awesome. Great. But don't let that be like, I'm only going to do it when I have the perfect lighting and the perfect cameras and the perfect setup, because that means you only do it once a month. Oh, uh, you know what? You're you're right. Actually, now you're right. God so let me tell you that. Here's what's here's what's happening. You're thinking okay. quality content in your head. Yeah. I want quality, but you have yeah. to understand for what you're doing, the quality is in the conversation, yeah. not in what camera you're using. I got you. You. Could, you could be in like pitch black, driving, right in the car, and you can have a fire conversation with somebody that could change people's lives, even though the video quality sucks. So I was, and for me, it hasn't been necessarily the video or even the equipment. Now, don't get me wrong. I did eventually go out to get the ring lighting and all yep. the other stuff, but I typically don't use it. I typically would use it for Instagram or something. My issue back to your quality standpoint is I was looking for quality guest, and I definitely started to record less for that very reason. And so, and if I go back to it, as you said, to angle it as a, a daily practice and just finding people that I do want to learn from and people that I can assist in the process and bring them all on, and then it really wouldn't matter. So here's the thing. Uh, yeah. One, yes, for your guests, you want to try to bring on people who you, can, you think you can learn from. Mm -hmm. That being said, if you have Oprah-level conversation abilities, Oprah can bring anybody on and make it a great show. This is true. This and that's the skill that you have. You have, you have a natural talent for it, but it's a skill that you need to develop to be world-class at. So to bring anybody on and understand their story and what they want, who has not been through some kind of hardship? Who is actually stepping up and being the leader that they should be? Like nobody. <laughs> Even the people who you admire and want to learn from, they're still struggling with their own stuff too. I'm still struggling with my own stuff all the time. So if you can't find an angle where you're going to learn from them, then you're going to help them. And everybody's got a story. And so for me, um, I just default to whatever interview I'm on. And this is where you need to summon the confidence because it sounds egotistical, but it's not. Like 
whatever interview I'm on, my mindset is even if the host sucks, I'm going to crush this interview. Like this is going to be the best interview this person's ever had on their channel, on their podcast, on their YouTube, just because I'm here. I would say that's egotistical, but I wear it so well. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's egotistical when you say it out loud, it so well. but it's like yeah. stemmed in confidence. That, but that, that's the only thing you're missing because you're thinking I need them to be great for me to be great. Nah, -uh. you're great regardless. And you'll pull greatness out of anybody because I'm Jimmy, right? Like the it. shift, right? Okay, and so you, and you need to put in the reps to actually develop the skill. Because you're 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 coasting off your natural talent, as opposed to actually honing in to be world class with the skill. That's probably one of the best things I've ever heard. Because like <laughs> I, I like legitimately, and I, I think you're I, I, not that I think you're right, but I know that you're right on that, and I can feel that. Like I am literally just coasting along with it. Th this is where this is where <sighs> it gets really hard. I just posted something on my Instagram stories today talking about the five stages of growth. The first stage is complaining. The second stage is dreaming. The third stage is the wannabe. The fourth stage is the achiever. And then the last stage is the high achiever. Most people get stuck in the wannabe stage because they give themselves a break. Because if something happens in the morning, they take the whole day off. Uh, and because a huge reason, your friends and family, the people around you, tell you what a great job you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you think you're doing amazing. But they're stuck in the first two stages. They're stuck being complainers and dreamers. So of course you look great. And so from their perspective- But you're still just a wannabe. Like you are not an achiever yet, right? And that's not just talking to Jimmy. That's talking to most people who are starting, starting their business. You start and you stop and you start and you stop and you start and you stop. You have to hone that skill. Jordan was the, you know, maybe the one of the most talented players that was in the gym every single day, working on his free throws, working on his shot all the time, right? That's the only thing you're missing is honing the skill because everybody around you says you're great at creating conversations and I'm with them. I'm with them 100%, but it also I'm saying, Jimmy, you suck, man. Come on, let's go. Like once like a month. Do more. It, what are we yeah. doing, dude? Do you want to be the best? You could be the know. best in the world at this thing, but it's never going to happen going once a month. It just won't. Yes, sir. That will have to change in me. And it's so crazy because I love it. Of I course love, you do. I love it. And you're spending why. 29 days out of 30 days a month doing stuff that you don't love, dude. <laughs> I, like, I'm not just, it is, okay, yeah. That's it, man. I got you. I got, I got you. you, man. I, I, I know you do. I know no, it's coming. Like it. It's coming. <laughs> it is coming. Evan, I, did, I, I, I appreciate this. Cool, man. I, I did, uh, not that I had no expectations of what to happen during this call. It's just... As you said, I've really been coasting along, so I didn't know, I didn't necessarily know the questions to ask. That's okay. It doesn't matter. Doing this. I know I'm going to pull out greatness because that's what I do. And that's what I've, I'm, pro I've got, I've got 10 of these today, right? But you're no different than me. You're just not putting in the reps. That's all. That's the only difference. You need more practice. Yes, you have sir. more natural, you do, you have more natural charisma and energy and vibe than I do. Like it's hard to match Jimmy in the charisma, energy, positivity, right? Field. Yeah. So it is. It does become easy to coast off it. So daily, daily, at least one a day. I'd be, I'd be looking at if you're taking it seriously, like two to three a day. Like that's how you get really good. But at like least two to one three a day. interviews a day. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. Dude, that if you take daunting. ten minutes, like in an Instagram live, you know, I guess you you're go right, through though, three I'm people. Going to Thirty minutes. Yeah. Okay. 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 What? Are you telling me you can't pull out a great conversation Jeez. in 10 minutes? No. Of I course could. you can. I was thinking 30 minutes, but you're you right. crush I it. But it's it's as long as it needs to be. Like you may hang on to somebody longer than than the 10 minutes. Awesome. And that becomes a 30 minute episode or an hour. But once you've gotten the thing, then you can move on to the next person. All right, Evan. Thank you I love so it, much. Again, I love it as well. And I really, again, I do miss you guys. I will see you all soon. I guess hopefully when we do another, or you do another tour. So otherwise, I hope I so. Gotta, otherwise, I gotta, I gotta find another way to get down to Memphis to see you. One hundred percent. Much love, man. Same see you soon. Now. Thanks, Evan. <laughs> Cheers. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.